flesh and bones as you see that I have? When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. Praise you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 This sermon has two somewhat unrelated parts, <laughs> only because I started with one reading and ended up with the other. Um, so, uh, the first part is the, the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, because when I first read this, I'm like, wait, we're missing an important piece here, because, you know, Peter starts, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And I was like, what are they wondering about? What happened just before is that Peter, and I believe it is James, on their way to the synagogue to worship, for they still were doing that, um, on the way, sees a beggar um, begging for, for a handout. And, um, and, and because they were, had given all their substance, all their wealth uh, to the common purse, they didn't have any, any money to, to hand to the beggar, but instead they healed the beggar. And he leaped up, able once again to walk and to earn his own way. And so when Peter says, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? They're wondering how Peter managed to do this pretty fantastic little trick. And then Peter is setting that firmly in their Jewish tradition and linking the fact that Jesus is the one that their tradition had said is to come, that Jesus <laughs> is the one who did this healing, not himself, Peter, but rather the risen Christ, working through Peter and the apostles, but the risen Christ at work, all, albeit. And then he calls people to repent, and he, he offers them that promise. I mean, he claims, you're the ones that crucified this Jesus. You're the ones that betrayed him. He says, but God is ready to forgive you. Yeah. Your betrayal was not the end of what God was doing. Your betrayal doesn't have to be the end of your relationship. And so the people are called to repentance, to turning from the, the focus they had to the new focus of Jesus Christ. Now for today's gospel, just like last week, the focus of today's gospel is Jesus speaking to disciples, the disciples who are gathered, who are fearful, who were uh, one of the commentaries that I read, the disciples and others gathered in Jerusalem were immersed in chaos and confusion, fear, frustration, guilt, grief, doubt, anxiety, suspicion, distrust, restlessness, despondency, and terror. And in the midst of those feelings, Jesus says, 
peace be with you. And I think that you and I as Christians need to really look and focus on what do we mean by God's peace being with us? We need to remember that God's peace is not an escape from chaos and confusion. It does not mitigate our fear, our frustration, our guilt, our grief, our doubt, our anxiety, our suspicion, our distrust, our restlessness, our despondency, and even our terror. But rather, it offers a solution to that. Peace, God's peace, is not the absence of those feelings, but rather the ability to gain a perspective of in those feelings and to understand that those feelings are not the last word, that the condition of this world is not the last word, that God is redeeming now and in the present time and for all time. Peace, God's peace, is the possibility and the promise that order, well-being, hope, compassion, and love will prevail. That in spite of our fear, in spite of our guilt, in spite of our grief, in spite of our, our situation, there is still the possibility of order, well-being, hope, compassion, and love. You and I are living in a terribly confused and frightened world right now. I would say that today's gospel reading, we are probably closer to feeling the way those first disciples felt. Not because we've lost our risen Lord and don't know what, the, what is about to happen to us, but rather because there's a raging pandemic that seems to have no end and no final solution and no victory. And indeed, all of us are extremely tired and weary. All of us are extremely frustrated. All of us are desiring with all our hearts for the world to be different than it is. And our job as Christians as people of the resurrection is to proclaim, not that those things don't happen and not that we don't feel those things, but that those feelings are not the final word, that there is still hope, there will be well-being, that compassion and love still outweighs fear and division, that we need not be people filled and paralyzed by those feelings, but rather we can be people that honor, honor and recognize those feelings within ourselves, but yet look to something beyond, <clears throat> place our hope in the risen Christ who will redeem and is redeeming this world, who even in the midst of the chaos we are living in is at work, creating community, bringing healing into our lives, <clears throat> giving purpose and meaning, even as we are so limited. Jesus, in this passage from Luke, commissions us to declare the presence and power of God in the midst of tragedy, despair, and death. Jesus commissions us to proclaim that those are not the final word, but that rather God, the God of hope, the God of love, the God of compassion is the final word. And so it does us no good to try to deny our feelings in the present situation, but it does us all the good to be able to see beyond that and to hold on to the good news that the last word in this world <laughs> is not the word of destruction and travail, but rather is the word of victory and new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which will appear on your screen in just a moment. 